In this video, I wanted to talk about Pete Doherty's new book, A Likely Lad. A few people seem to be a bit dubious about the fact it was ghostwritten. However, reading the introduction, it sounded like it needed to be done that way, as Doherty admitted he needed someone to organise it for him in a way that made sense, and I think it works. The whole book is written in the first person, and it's direct quotes from over 60 hours of interviews that Doherty did with ghostwriter Simon Spence, and it really does cover a lot of ground in a lot of detail. One thing it does make sense of is a lot of the names you associate with Doherty and Libertines and explains how those relationships formed, particularly people like Alan Wass and Wolfman. If, like me, you were a bit of a fanboy back in the day of Libertines and Baby Shambles, then you really will find this book fascinating, I think. It clears up a lot of the myths that surrounded him and the bands and is extremely frank when it comes to the drug taking. For me, one of the most interesting things was the difference he felt being in the Libertines compared to Baby Shambles around 2003-2004. When I spoke to Gemma Clark on the podcast, I asked if she felt Doherty enjoyed the freedom in Baby Shambles that he maybe couldn't get in the Libertines at the time. And he more than confirmed that in the book. Even though he was cut adrift from the Libertines against his will, he seemed to crave that freedom of being in another band that wasn't as tied up with labels and management. It was also good to hear about some of the healing relationship he's now got with his family and particularly some nice things he had to say about his son, who it can't have been easy for over the years. Anyway, without giving away too many spoilers, here's some of the stories that are included in the book. His first band at school, first meeting with Carl, his first time trying drugs and some of the crazy anecdotes he's got from being in rehabs all over the world, following the strokes around the country, and one funny story about Carl trying to impress Julian Casablancas with an acoustic guitar, smuggling drugs around the world, the fact he didn't actually play guitar on Dirt Back Into The Sun, Nicking people's phones for money whilst in the Libertines. Trying to carry on the Libertines without the rest of the band. Once playing a gig with Baby Shambles and the Libertines on the same night, featuring two different drummers for the Libertines. Trying to make a deal with Celebrity Big Brother. Interactions with the likes of Ronnie Wood, Malcolm McLaren and Elton John. Dismissing Alex Turner. The truth about his relationships with Kate Moss and Amy Winehouse. And the details of his spells in prison. Basically, if this era was your thing, I couldn't recommend it more. If you have read it, let me know what you think in the comments.